Over 58 million years ago, the largest snake to have ever existed graced the rivers of northern Colombia. Today, we have the Titanoboa. G'day ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host bringing you a new series, this being overrated, underrated, or perfectly rated. Just a quick rundown on how this will go, I'll go through a number of different prehistoric creatures, this including their description, where they fit in the environment, and all that good stuff. Then I'll figure out where I think they rate compared to what the general public believes. Anyways, let's get into it. The Titanoboa is one of the most famous prehistoric creatures that isn't a dinosaur. I'd say this is chalked up mainly because people fall into one of two categories. This being people that love snakes and those that are absolutely scared of them. Hence, either side would quickly hear about the largest snake to have ever lived. But anyways, let's get into the basic description. Now, its name is derived from the two words Titanic and Boa, which I know, I know, that must be a shock to just about every person when they figured it out. These titans would have grown to some enormous lengths, being around 12 meters, with paleontologist Carlos Jamilio, hopefully I pronounced that one right, suggesting that they could have even reached 13 meters on average. I mean, if that's the average, imagine how large a peak specimen could have grown to. But let's just take a moment to think about it. It was reaching lengths that challenged school buses, T-Rexes, so many large things. But despite their near unending length, they weren't as heavy as one might imagine. If you quickly take a look of how these dangerous noodles are built, they might be thick and muscular, but they aren't particularly heavy when compared to some other reptiles, especially crocodilians. This can be seen as recent studies of the Titanoboa's size puts them to be just over a ton. Now don't get me wrong, being over a ton is definitely heavy, but let's compare that to a saltwater crocodile, a crocodile which is half their length, yet is able to reach similar weight at its peak size. So this isn't to chalk down the snake's weight, but it's more or less to give it a comparison showing how snakes are quite light when you compare them to other animals. Being that this snake was so long and also quite heavy, it's pretty much solidified that they were aquatic, almost like today's anacondas. They would have inhabited the rivers and swamps, as I can't imagine they would have traversed quickly on land and hence wouldn't have been able to hunt much. Could you imagine this snake going through the trees? Those branches are for sure going to snap. There's also a bit of debate whether or not this snake could perform the action of constricting. It's almost how like a Psychosuchus wouldn't be able to carry out a death roll. I'm not too sure in this area, but I did think it was important to mention. But now let's take a look how they sat in the ecosystem. The habitat of the Titanoboa was categorized by a warm and humid climate, with abundant water sources such as rivers and swamps. The tropical environment provided the ideal conditions for a diverse range of both flora and fauna, which would have included large prey animals for the Titanoboa to potentially hunt, but we'll get more into that later. The presence of this massive snake suggests that it was well adapted to the warm, wet conditions of the ancient rainforest ecosystem. But since we mentioned prey, we can now talk about arguably its most debated area. This being, what did it actually hunt? People that have learned a bit about this snake would have heard how they were hunting everything in their ecosystem, from fish to crocodiles to turtles and more. However, recent studies point towards the Titanoboa being mainly a piscivore. This means its diet would have most likely consisted of fish, specifically lungfish that could have reached 2 meters long, rather than fully grown crocs and turtles. This idea was supported by a study carried out by Jason Head et al, where they researched its skull structure and came to this likely idea. Now, this doesn't mean they couldn't hunt juveniles or many of the species that lived throughout the river. According to Alex Hastings, the younger individuals were definitely not safe from the Titanoboa, but the biggest of these species would have been a bit too much for the 42-foot snake to handle. Here, he was talking about the crocodilomorph, a... a Chaturonisuchus? You know what? Here is what it's called, Putting it on the screen, pronounce that however you feel right. It's definitely a bit of a mumble jumble name, so uh, yeah, we'll move on from that. This crocomorph could have grown anywhere from 4 to 6 meters in length, and weighed around, if not more, than the 400 kilogram region. Now that's certainly not small, rivaling even saltwater crocs, but it does say something about the snake's diet, as despite being half the titanoboa's size, the croc wasn't likely to be hunted in adulthood. And that's what also may support it not being a constrictor. This is because you'd expect a snake twice the size of the croc to be capable of constricting it with the supposed 
force of multiple Eiffel Towers, and hence it should be something it could handle quite easily. But this could all just be me overthinking, so I'll digress, merely just putting out my ideas. Though within its ecosystem, I believe that it still would have been an apex predator, as not much would have been capable of rivaling it due to its sheer size. I imagine this snake would have been an opportunistic predator. We would mainly sit as a piscivore, but if a juvenile croc or something else came too close, well, it definitely wouldn't complain and would make it a quick snack. So now we've got all that out of the way, it's time to go on to deciding its rating. And well, honestly, I think it's a mix of both overrated and underrated. So let me explain. I think the Titanoboa is one of the single most overrated creatures when it comes to debates. You should have seen the earlier points of YouTube, specifically seen me when I was a kid with all the videos and hype around this snake. I used to think this thing could take on the T-Rex, Dinosuchus, all that sort of stuff, which didn't help because there were videos showing the T-Rex getting constricted somehow. I don't know how we'd been able to move like that, but hey, when I was a kid, I didn't know too much. I just took stuff at face value. But spoiler alert to my younger self, this one ton snake wouldn't do much to a 10 ton Tyrannosaur or a 10 ton Croc. And although our knowledge is improving as the days go on, some people still overrate this snake, thinking it's unbeatable. However, in terms of being an animal, take away these debates around them saying who's going to win. I'm saying just people being fascinated by these animals and wanting to learn more about them, it's underrated. I mean, come on, it's the largest snake to have ever existed. It may have constricted, it may have not, arguably making it more interesting. It lived alongside large crocs and even larger turtles like the carbohemes. It lived during a time where mammals had not yet taken over. It's interesting how it likely would have been a mainly fish eater, despite its massive size and its place as a potential apex predator. It makes it unique, and for some people, not being able to take down the biggest creature around is a bit of a turnoff, and hence it becomes underrated. I feel like in recent times, our view on these amazing prehistoric creatures has become just a tad bit skewed. A lot of people base their ratings on whether or not they are a strong creature, or whether or not they could beat so and so in a fight. But that I feel is a topic for another day. So which stamp of approval would I give this titanic boa? Overrated, underrated, or perfectly rated? To be honest, I'd give it both an overrated and underrated stamp. As I've discussed, it's underrated as an actual apex predator within its ecosystem, but overrated in terms of people putting it up against other prehistoric creatures out of its time and out of its ecosystem. Debates are fun, don't get me wrong. I'm no one to go against them. I do them here quite often. But what I'm saying is we have to just look a bit deeper into the animal for what it truly is rather than just looking at fun hypothetical debates. So yeah. I give the Titanoboa two stamps of both overrated and underrated. And we've reached the end of the video. As always, I hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and also make sure to check out my TikTok and Instagram for shorter form content. I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya.